In this presentation, we will cover the paper Virtual Kayaking, a study on the effect of low-cost passive haptics on the user experience while exercising. This paper presents the results of a pilot study that assesses the effect of passive haptics on the user experience in virtual reality simulations of recreation and sports activities. A virtual reality kayaking environment with realistic physics simulation and water rendering was developed that allowed users to steer the kayak using natural motions. Within this environment, the users experience two different ways of paddling, using first a pair of typical virtual reality controllers, and second, one custom-made smart paddle that provided the passive haptic feedback of a real paddle. The results of this pilot study indicate that the users learned faster how to steer the kayak using the paddle, which they found to be more intuitive to use and more appropriate for this application. The results also demonstrated an increase in the perceived level of enjoyment and realism on the virtual experience. The goals of this paper are threefold. First of all, utilize passive haptics in order to improve the level of immersion help the users learn kayaking in a fail-safe virtual simulation, and operate the simulation better compared to the conventional controller, virtual reality controller-based interaction. Kayaking is an outdoor activity that can be enjoyed with easy motions and with minimal skill, and in this simulation setting can be performed on equal terms by both people who are physically able and those with disabilities. For this reason, it is an ideal exercise for physical therapy, and its efficacy as a rehabilitation tool has been demonstrated in several studies. Kayaking simulations offer a minimal risk environment which, in addition to rehabilitation, can be used in training and recreational applications. The mechanics of boat simulation in general have been well studied and, and led to the design of high-fidelity simulation systems in the past decades. These simulators immerse the users by rendering a virtual environment on a projector or a computer screen that is mounted on the in the simulator system. Furthermore, the users can control the simulation by imitating kayaking motions using remote controls equipped with accelerometers or by performing the same motions in front of a kinesthetic sensor. The use of virtual reality headset in intense rehabilitation and training applications always has the risk of serious injuries because the users do not maintain a contact with the physical environment around them. We can reduce this risk if we can uh, track the environment and uh, the hardware of the simulator as well as the critical objects that are involved in the simulation, such as the paddle or an instrument. And uh, this tracking is possible through the uh, use of uh, uh, passive haptics. We can use virtual reality trackers that can be firmly attached to those critical objects, such as uh, handheld objects, tables, walls, or tools that are in involved in this interaction. And studies have shown that this results in a sensory rich experience. In this paper, we would like to assess the role of passive haptics in virtual reality kayak. In particular, we want to test whether the use of passive haptics improves the level of immersion while kayaking in virtual reality. And also would like to test whether the use of passive haptics helps users learn kayaking faster and operate the simulation better compared to the conventional controller-based interaction. For the purposes of this study, a virtual environment with a river that allowed 8 to 10 minutes of kayaking was developed. This environment included gamification elements, such as uh, five segments with checkpoints as progress indicators, and several collectibles that motivated the users to progress in this environment. The system was developed in fall 2019, and it included natural user interaction with a real paddle. Virtual reality controllers were rigidly attached to the blades of a real paddle so that the users could steer the kayak with natural motions. Furthermore, the arms of the chair, uh, where this particular interaction took place, 
aligned with was aligned with the sides of the kayak so the users could fill the boat and avoid collision with the paddle. The virtual reality controllers, as you can see, were attached to the blades of a real paddle. And in addition, vibration cues were uh, uh, triggered uh, when the paddle was sub submerged to the virtual water. The size of the virtual boat was aligned with the actual size of the kayak so that the sides of the boat could uh, uh, have one-to-one -one correspondence with the side of this chair so that they could fill the size of the kayak and overall the simulation uh, uh, within and the, the association between the simulation environment and the real environment. In particular, the main haptic, passive haptic component was what we call the smart paddle. On both blades, virtual reality controllers were firmly attached so that we have six degrees of freedom of unobstructed tracking. Now, on both sides, vibration cues were triggered when the corresponding side was submerged in the virtual water. As you can see from this demo, the user could naturally steer the boat comfortably, uh, uh, while comfortably uh, seated in, uh, in this uh, uh, chair and uh, uh, intuitively, with natural gestures, learn how uh, to um, um, fight the current of uh, this uh, uh, river and, of course, uh, follow the cues and the gamified elements, uh, such as collectibles, to advance to this uh, virtual uh, simulation. Our user study tested two hypotheses. First of all, the use of passive haptics improves the level of immersion while kayaking in virtual reality. And then, the use of passive haptics helps users learn kayaking faster and operate the simulation better compared to the conventional controller-based interaction. The user study was conducted at the University of Florida Reality Lab in spring 2020 and included 10 subjects. This test was conducted using A-B tests. In, both of, in, in these tests, the same environment virtual simulation was used with the same simulation parameters such as physics simulation, but uh, the simulation was triggered with different controllers. In the first case, the virtual reality uh, typical controllers was utilized to control the paddles. And in the second case, the proposed smart paddle was used uh, to control exactly the same simulation. At the end of this uh, experience, the users had to evaluate specific uh, uh, metrics and respond to specific questions and express in a seven scale their opinion if they strongly agree or strongly disagree uh, or the intermediate um, uh, responses on each particular case. The metrics are shown here with uh, the, their st uh, importance uh, with respect to their statistical significance. The users found that it was more appropriate for this application, the, the proposed, the smart paddle, it was clearer on how to operate, and that their virtual experience felt more real, and the virtual experience was more enjoyable in the case of a smart paddle, and they learned faster how to steer the kayak. Then, with a slightly uh, less significant uh, level, they found that the smart paddle helped them improve their skills in kayaking and it could help improve their fitness. Furthermore, it was a more intense experience using the uh, proposed paddle compared to the traditional uh, uh, virtual reality controllers. Furthermore, we did a progress analysis in order to understand how they behaved in the same simulation. The subjects who use the paddle finished the level in 20% less time, which corresponded to 30% increase in their speed overall compared to the virtual reality controllers. Furthermore, all users improved their performance during the B test, the second experience, whatever was uh, that one, because we used uh, a random assignment uh, in the order of the simulation. So this indicates that the skills acquired are transfer, transferable between the two modes of interaction. However, the subjects who use the paddle 
in, as the second experience, improve their previous performance three times more compared to those who used VR controllers as their second simulation. As a conclusion, a small-scale study was conducted to assess this virtual kayaking simulation with custom-made, low-cost passive haptics. And the results indicate that the use of passive haptics improves the level of immersion while kayaking in virtual reality, helps users learn kayaking faster and operate the simulation better co compared to the conventional controller-based interaction, the skills acquired in our kayaking simulation are transferable between the two modes of interaction, and finally, our virtual environment teaches proper maneuvering techniques through experiential learning.